Welcome to part three of, of this series of videos illustrating the techniques involved with finishing the body of a Brian May Red Special replica guitar. In this video, I'm going to cover both grain filling and staining the veneer. So just to recap, in part two, I glued two squares of mahogany marquetry veneer to this blockboard panel with tight bond aliphatic wood glue to illustrate how I veneered the upper and lower surfaces of the guitar body. I also glued these two strips of veneer to the blockboard with Evo Stick Time Bond contact adhesive to illustrate how I veneered the side of the guitar body. The first thing you should do is, is check for and remove any surface scratches or imperfections in the veneer with careful abrasion before you apply the grain filler. Particularly this black grain filler accentuates all those imperfections just as well as it accentuates the grain. Now I prefer to scrape the veneer carefully with a, a utility blade rather than use abrasive paper and risk sanding through to the base plywood. Try this out and if you choose to use this method I, I do recommend snipping the pointed corners off the utility blade like I've done here and then round them off uh, using a sanding disc or a metal file. Now this should eliminate the risk of scoring the veneer and this happened unfortunately in a few cases uh, on the upper surface of my guitar. So there's the first tip for you. Now I prefer black grain filler because this accentuates this uh, chatoyancy or tiger's eye effect. Um, this is a characteristic inherent uh, in the mahogany grain. So the black grain filler gives a, a very similar look to Brian May's original red special. Or of course, you can use a neutral or a brown filler if this is your cosmetic preference. One thing to take away from this video with the, the grain filling and the staining, things tend to look worse before they look better. And uh, you don't get the fantastic kind of color variation and the, the popping of the grain until you start putting the lacquer on it and the lacquer's dry. So this is just to, to warn you that the appearance of the wood changes quite unnervingly at each stage of finishing. And after this treatment, the hue of the mahogany will change from a salmon pink to a walnut brown. So this brand of grain filler, Black Jekyll by W.S. Jenkins of Tottenham in London, is a thixotropic mixture of black pigment and powder of some sort in naphtha petroleum spirit. So you need to either stir it or shake it before use. So let's have a listen when we shake it. So you can hear that that's uh, relatively viscous. Now the instructions state to work the filler into the grain, going with the run of the grain using a cloth, then wipe the surface clean with a rough cloth, allow that to dry, then abrade the surface with 320 grit or medium fine abrasive paper. Now I've tried two different methods. Um, I did apply it also with a, a sponge applicator, but in this video, I'm going to apply it with one of these sort of standard kitchen cloths, working it quite heavily into the grain, and then I'll remove it with this microfiber cloth. You can hear it's interacting with the surface of the veneer, so that should uh, work quite well to remove any excess. On my three-quarter scale red special, which had a solid mahogany body, so there was no risk of sanding through the veneer to the base wood, I applied a layer of that Jacobfil and I left it overnight to dry, then I removed it with the medium fine grade of abrasive paper. And that result was quite satisfactory. However, on my full-size red special build, I removed the excess Jacobfil with a cloth dampened with white spirit a short time after, maybe five to ten minutes after application. Now to some extent this does remove some of the Jacobfil from the grain, but the surface does eventually even out after successive coats of lacquer. But please bear in mind that freshly abraded mahogany is a pale straw colour because the wood immediately under the surface layer is dry. And as the surface itself absorbs moisture from the air, it does darken through a pale straw to a salmon pink to kind of a light terracotta hue. So you should take this into account when staining. And those of you who studied chemistry at high school might remember that anhydrous powdered salts, such as copper sulfate, 
are pale in colour, are almost colourless. But when you hydrate them, you get a dramatic change to a very intense colour. In the case of copper sulphate, it's a deep blue. So in this demonstration, I will illustrate both methods on the two halves of the veneered block board so you can see the difference. To finish the section on grain filling, I'm now going to abrade back the left hand panel and the left hand strip with 320 grit 3M Stick It Gold abrasive paper. Okay, I think we'll leave the sanding there. I think that's uh, sufficient grain filler removed now to illustrate for you what will happen when we add the stain. 
In the final segment of this video on grain filling and staining, I'm going to stain these panels of mahogany, which I'd previously grain filled, with the Rustin's red mahogany wood dye. To recap, I prepared the panels and the strips on the left and the right in two different ways. On the panel and strip on the left, I applied the grain filler and let it dry overnight, and then I sanded back the excess using medium fine 320 grit 3M stick at gold abrasive paper. This is really what you should expect your mahogany or your veneer to look like when it's properly grain filled and abraded off. So you can see there's quite a lot of the mahogany visible. Uh, there's very little of the grain filler still remaining on the surface. And what is there, you can plainly see has filled the grain and the grain is popping out. Now the panel on the right, I followed a slightly different method and this is what I did on my build. A few minutes after I'd applied the grain filler with a cloth, I then used a microfiber cloth, slightly dampened with white spirit, to remove any excess. What I've done here is I probably waited just a few minutes too long to remove it, but we'll run with it and you can compare and contrast how the, the stain takes. Let's take a look at the Rustin's wood dye then. This is the red mahogany version. I've had this tin for some time, probably for about four or five years. You need to stir well or shake before use. It's a quick drying, penetrating stain for all new or stripped wood. It's easy to apply and will not raise the grain, and that's clearly important. You can use it on bare wood prior to finishing with any Rustin's wood finishes. And it's suitable for interior or exterior use. Now, I won't read all this out, let's just look at the instructions for application. Stir well, I'm going to shake in this case, uh, before and during use to make sure there's no sediment on the bottom of the tin. I'm going to pour it into this small ramekin dish to apply it. The instructions are to apply evenly with a clean, dry cloth in a warm, dry atmosphere. On soft, absorbent wood, a second coat may be applied, uh, but for hardwoods, uh, which is what we are using here, you should only use one coat. You can dilute it if you want to, but I'm just going to use it neat in this case. Right, the instructions say to apply with a dry cloth. I'll do both, so I do like these sponge applicators. They work just as well as a cloth, so I'll demonstrate both methods for you. Okay, so let's soak that up into the sponge and apply this to the right-hand panel. What I'm going to do here is just apply it quite generously, and you can see it will soak in. This is following exactly the same process I did for my build. Apply it quite generously, let it soak in, and then come back later and wipe off the excess. So I've applied that very generously. Okay, let's just carry on with the sponge applicator on here, and I'll use the cloth on the small strips. This is a relatively intense stain. So when it's soaked in, you can see you will not need a second coat. Okay, with quite an even coat on both panels, let's move to the cloth. I've got vinyl disposable gloves on here. I find this stain uh, does persist in your skin for quite a few days. It's not easy to remove, so always recommended to wear gloves. Okay, there's the cloth, it's absorbed all that up, here we go. So, completely different situation with the cloth, you don't get as much going in. And uh, that's really all you need, I've applied far too much with the sponge, so anyway, you can compare and contrast both methods. The good thing about the cloth is, in fact, let me just wipe the excess off there with the cloth. The good thing about the cloth is you can kind of apply some pressure help the stain go into the wood. Okay. And you really don't need much. Once it's absorbed in and dried, I'm going to leave it overnight for you. There we go. So the combination of the cloth and the sponge, we've got a nice even coating on all these panels and strips. Okay, so that's the grain filling and the staining complete. 
All that remains is to leave this to dry, ready for part four, where I'm going to make up and coat these panels with Rustin's plastic coating. Let me just hold the panels up parallel with the camera a bit closer. You can compare and contrast already that the right hand side is browner than the left hand side panel.